What's going on everyone? This is Jay Patel and in this video we will be understanding what is L2 regularization, why do we need regularization and also we will implement the L2 regularization in Python completely from scratch. Also I will be providing you with the assignment which you can download from the link in the description box. In that assignment there will be blank space provided for you to implement and complete the function. And once you complete those functions by coding, you will be able to check the your accuracy as well and how your model is performing. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing because I upload machine learning videos like these every week where I explain the mathematical details behind every machine learning model as well as the intuition behind them. And afterwards, we implement that in Python completely from scratch. So hit the red subscribe button and also hit the bell icon. And without further ado, Let's get started with this video. Let's look at what is overfitting. Let's say we have this as our training data set and this as our test data set. Now it is possible that after training the model for a certain time, the decision boundary fits so well to this data set that it captures almost all the points in it. Now if we try to make the predictions on the test data set with this model, uh, we can see that it will not perform well on the test data set. Thus, we will have high train accuracy, but low test accuracy. And this condition is called the overfitting condition. What we ideally want is that a smooth curve like this that can fit well both in the training data set as well as in the test data set. So to do this, we use regularization. Let's say if you are using a neural network, then this highly complex non-linearity could be the result of having a very deep neural network which has many many hidden layers and each hidden layer has many neurons. So all the complex connections between each neuron will create a highly complex non-linear curve like this. So if we want to somehow increase the linearity or to have a smoother curve here, then we would want to have a slightly lesser number of neurons. So let's say somehow if we can get rid of certain neurons in the neural network or better say nullify the effect of certain neurons in the hidden layers, then we can increase the linearity and thus have a better smoother curve that will fit properly. A better way to understand is by taking an example of a regression problem. Let us assume that instead of a neural network, we are making a regression model. And overfitting in this data set will be something like this complicated curve where the, our model will try to fit on every data point of this data set. This complex curve is only possible if we have so many number of parameters and comparatively less data set. So let's say here we have 500 parameters and if we had only one feature and or let's say two parameters then it is only possible to fit a straight line in it so this is highly linear what we want is a middle ground between these two curves so that we can have a proper curve that fit well and this is possible by eliminating or better say nullifying the effect of certain parameters or certain turns in this curve so that we can have a better smoother curve that fits like this properly and this technique to nullify the effect of certain parameters or neurons in a neural network is called regularization so now we will look at the mechanism of L2 regularization and see how it can help us to nullify the effect of certain parameters. We know that the main objective of our model is to reduce this cost function value. So if we add this term in our cost function, then this will create a nullifying effect of certain parameters. Let us see how. It is because the reason that we want to minimize this cost function value and if we add a square of our W parameters in the cost function, it will force our model to reduce the value of the W's as well. And some of our W parameter will be close to zero and it will create that nullifying effect that we saw earlier. Let us examine this term carefully. This sum of wj square represents the sum of squares of all the parameters. So let's say in the previous example, we had theta 0 to theta 500 parameters. 
then this will be equal to the sum of squares of all the parameters. Thus, this will be a singular positive value. We also have this term lambda here. So, what is this lambda? You can consider this term as a tuner. So, what it does is that it fine tunes the proportion of the linearity and the nonlinearity in our model. Let's say if we increase the value of this lambda, then it will force our model to reduce the value of w even more. So we will have more number of w's which will have its value close to zero. Thus it will increase the linearity even more. But if we reduce the value of lambda, then we can have the privilege of having a higher w values and thus it will increase the non-linearity of our model. And this lambda is also called as a regularization parameter. Now, instead of this w square, we can just take the modulus of w and that will also work well because eventually what we want is the having the value of w close to zero. And this, and if we use just the modulus of w and not the square, then this is called L1 regularization. Now, this L2 regularization can be used for logistic regression as well as for the linear regression as well. The only difference will be of the difference of the cost function and for the linear regression this will become theta parameter and for logistic regression it should be the w parameter. We can also use L2 regularization in a neural network. In the neural network what we will need to do is that we will need to take the sum of all the w parameters that are present in our network. For example this will be a w this will be a w, all these will be the w's. So what we want is to take the square of all the w's and do the summation of it and add that term here in our cost function. So if this is our w matrix for any lth layer, then we want to take its square and sum it for all the layers. Along with this, there's another important thing that to be noted. If we are adding any term to our cost function, we will also need to change our back propagation equations because in our back propagation algorithm we were using this term del cost by del w so if we change the cost our del cost by del w is going to change so let's look at that change so while calculating this del cost by del w3 we will also need to add the derivative of this term so let us find the derivative of this term let us first take the derivative of this term with one of the w parameter out of the all. So this w3 will be a matrix of lot of wij values, right? So let us take only the derivative with one of the term. So when we are doing a partial derivative with respect to this wij, all these terms are going to be considered as a constant, thus its derivatives are going to be zero, and we will only be considering this as our variable. So our derivative for this thing is just going to be w i j. Thus the entire derivative of this is going to be lambda by m and capital of w l. This capital of w is the matrix containing all the weight parameters of that layer. So for del w3 we will need to add lambda by m w of 3 and for w2 we will add lambda by m w2 and similarly for w1. Thus we can implement the L2 regularization. What we need to do is add this term in our cost function and make this change in our back propagation and it will create a nullifying effect of certain weight parameters which will create a more linear curve or a slightly better curve. Okay, so now we will be implementing the L2 regularization in Python. First we will train the model without regularization and see if it is overfitting or not and then we will be implementing L2 regularization to see what effect does it take. So I have already made a neural network with two hidden layers and we will be training this on this training data set. This training data set has 211 data points and two features. The test data set has 200 data points and obviously two features.
Every single line of code that you see here will be available in the assignment along with the data set which you can download it from the link in the description box and if you have watched my previous videos you will be easily able to understand the every single line of code that I have written here. If you haven't watched my video then I will provide its link down in the description box as well as you can find its link by clicking on the upper right corner. So let's now train this model. Don't worry about these NaN values here. It is coming because our neural network is way more complex than the amount of data set that we have and the amount of features that we have. Uh, as our data set is small and uh, we have a very complicated neural network, it is prone to be overfitting. Now let's see if it is overfitting or not. We can see it is overfitting. It is trying to uh, capture every single data point as it can, uh, like forming these circles or uh, going the edges like that. And we can see that the train accuracy is around uh, over 98 and the test accuracy is only 93.5. So there's a big difference between training and the test accuracy. Now when this uh, same plot or the same model will be uh, tested against the test data set, it will not perform well because now this same curve uh, is not fitting appropriately on this test data set and thus it will definitely be showing poor results in the test data set and so we will be implementing L2 regularization and see if it is helping to improve the test accuracy or not. So as you know, we need to add this term in the cost function and this term in the while updating the W parameters. So I will grab the cost function that I used for training this model and we will add this term here. Now I will name that term as L2 regularization cost, which will be equal to lambda by 2m multiplied by summation of square of all the W parameters. Now as we have two hidden layers, so we will be having three uh, W matrices, W1, W2 and W3. So we will do the individual sum of squares of these W matrices and then add all these three together. So first we will square the W1 and then do the summation of all the W's that are inside that W1 matrix. And then we will do the same for W2 and W3 and then the summation of all the three. But we do not have this W1, W2 and W3 here and as well as this lambda. So we will have to pass this as our parameter. Note oh, lambda is a keyword so I am using lambda without a. We will have the w1 from our parameters and then just add cost with this term. That's it, our cost function is done. Now we will update the backward propagation. So I have grabbed the backward propagation that I use for this model. Now I will name this as L2. I should be doing the same here. We'll pass lambda and we need to add this term over this DWs. So all these DW3, DW2 and DW1. So we'll add them. It will be lambda multiplied by W3 divided by M. Similarly for W2 and W1 and our back propagation is also done. So we will just make these few changes in our model and we will test it. In our model we will add this lambda here. We will set its default value as 0.7 and pass parameters. Change these names and it's set. Just a small error, I have misspelled the lambda here. So we will train it now and let's see. Let's plot the decision boundary. You can see the accuracy of test data set has increased from 93.5 to 95. The training accuracy have decreased but it's okay for now. 
uh, and you can see that the curve is much more smoother and this curve actually does makes a lot of sense instead of having this vague irregular highly complicated curve which doesn't make sense so with regularization we can smoothen out the curve we can improve the test accuracy and we can uh, avoid overfitting in our model now what you can do is you can change the lambda values and play with it to see what effect does it take if we set the lambda to be zero it will be it will work same as without regularization because now these all the terms that we have added in our cost and in our backward propagation equation will be will become zero so it will be so the regularizing effect will be cancelled for now let's uh, let's make this lambda value as 0.1 and train it again and see what effect does it take now you can see that again this curve is now trying to overfit not a lot of overfitting but just slightly more complicated than that what we had previously still the accuracy is pretty fine and now the and i would say now this is even better fit for this data set so i hope you found this video valuable if so hit the like button also share it among your friends that would be really helpful to me do let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions and in the next video we will be understanding dropout regularization which is another type of regularization and again we will be implementing the same in python and see its effect as well so i see you in the next one